OBGYN procedures. Breast exams. Be prepared to teach the self breast exam procedure to patients. Clinical breast examinations should be done routinely according to age. Mammograms should be done starting at age 40 or before for women at risk, meaning a positive family history of breast cancer at an early age. Breast exam instructions. Seven days after the start of the patient's menstrual period, the breast exam should be done. Using three fingers working a circular pattern up and down the breasts while in the shower and also lying down after a shower. Exam, examine the breasts in front of a mirror after a shower with arms at side and raised above the head, watching for changes in shape, size, and contouring. Patients should also look for any puckering, dimpling, or changes in skin texture. Patients should also squeeze each nipple to check for any discharge that may occur. The pictures show how to examine the breasts. So arms at the side, arms above the head, and arms at the hips. And you all want to know any irregularities or any changes in the breasts. The following pictures show the movement, the circular movement, and a pattern up and down the breasts to check for any nodules that can be felt. Picture six is doing the same thing while lying down. And picture five is squeezing each nipple to check for any discharge. The mammogram, this shows the mammogram machine each breast is compressed horizontally, then obliquely, and an x-ray is taken in each position. The film plate is underneath the breast, and the x-ray beam comes down onto the breast and takes the picture of the tissue. The pap smear detects HPV and cervical cancer. Factors interfering with the pap tests is menstruation, the use of vaginal creams, spermicidal foams, and douching two to three days prior to examination. We encourage patients not to do any of the following or schedule an appointment while menstruating for your pap smear test. The following are the instructions for the thin prep pap smear test. Most pap smears are done by thin prep. However, in the past, pap smears have been done by collection of a swab and then smeared on a, a slide and then sprayed with a fixative and looked under the microscope. Now we obtain the specimen with a cervical broom. We then put the broom in the container, swish the container, label the container and close it, and send it with the requisition to the lab for testing. Pap smear requisitions. The medical assistant should include the patient history as much as possible. The use of certain medications such as tetracycline or birth control. This can alter the results of the pap smear. The date of the test, the date of the last menstrual period of the patient. This must be recorded or the test will be rejected. Whether the patient has a history of bleeding disorder or taking any anticoagulation medications, and whether the patient is pregnant or may be pregnant. Here is an example of cytology request form. So the patient's name, first and last, patient sex, which I'm hoping would be female, and the date of birth. 
Sometimes we include the address, city, state, and zip code of the patient and the physician, the facility that you are at, and sometimes the insurance. It is very important to, at minimum, have the patient name, date of birth, date and time of collection, and chart number. Sometimes we will have a sticker that we can print off and use instead of writing out this information. Many electronic medical records have a form within them that can fill out the cytology request form and then print one out. All pap smears are cervical unless otherwise indicated by the physician. We always will use a thin prep with current technology. And unless the patient has had an abnormal pap smear in the past, it will be a routine pap smear. Routine pap smears are always done with HPV testing on ASCUS, which is the recommended one. This is for routine pap smears. If there is an abnormal pap smear and we are doing uh, abnormal previous pap smear and we are doing a recurrent pap smear, we would check either this box or this box depending on what the physician would require. The next boxes need to be checked and are important in indicating the results of the test, whether the patient is on contraceptive, pregnant, postpartum, hormone replacement therapy, postmenopausal, hysterectomy, abnormal bleeding, gross lesion, radiation therapy, therapy within the pelvic region, or chemotherapy of any cancer. Previous abnormal pap smears, the date needs to be indicated and what kind of abnormality was on there. If there is no abnormal previous pap smear, the date of the previous pap smear should be indicated on this line. Oftentimes, the case numbers are not indicated and not required. However, if you do have a case number, it is often convenient to place on the requisition. And the last, last menstrual period must be indicated, regardless if the patient is postmenopausal or not. If the last menstrual period was five years ago, that's what you would put as a date. So to recap, the things that must be on the cytology request form are the patient name and date of birth, the physician, the date and time of collection, cervical needs to be checked unless otherwise indicated, routine pap smear, or if it is a high-risk pap smear, you would check that one, reflex HPV on ASCUS needs to be checked. If any of these in the fill out completely box are positive or a yes, you would need to check that. And date of previous pap smear and last menstrual period. If there is no date of previous pap smear and it is the patient's first pap smear, you would just say none or NA. A colposcopy is done to examine, visually examine the vagina or cervical surfaces through the use of a colposcope. It is used to detect cancer in the cervix and is often the test that we do after a pap smear has come back positive. As you see on the left here, here is a normal cervix of healthy tissue. On the bottom here is a cervix that is cancerous. As you can see, the changes of white and the abnormal cells. The LEAP procedure is a procedure which stands for a loop electrosurgical excision procedure. 
This is often used to treat cervical type cancers in abnormal cells. Other treatments include laser therapy, cryoablation, and radical hysterectomies. Oftentimes, if carcinomas are invading pelvic cells, cell walls, or is metastasized, radiation therapy and simpleplastin-based chemotherapy is recommended instead. A cervical biopsy punch is a small tissue sample that is taken from the cervix and examined for disease and other problems. The cervix is viewed through a speculum and the patient is in lithotomy position. Sometimes this will occur during or with a colposcopy if needed. Endometrial ablations typically occur for endometrial cancers. They help rid the lining, the cell lining that may be cancerous in the endometrium. What happens is microwaves are thrown off by the tip of this probe that is inserted into the endometrium. The, these waves burn the endometrial tissue and the endometrium sheds those cells that have been killed and tissue that has been killed to rid of the cancerous cells. Another method is a balloon that is inserted and inflated into the endometrium, along the endometrium, and this is a thermal balloon that helps shed the cancerous cells and get rid of the cancerous cells in the endometrium. If endometrial ablation is not used, sometimes doctors will use endometrial radiation. Rarely is there a need for chemotherapy for endometrial cancers. <laughs>